found this ATM, but you, of course you have no idea where it, pos where it is. So that's where we can retrieve the ATM settings. Again, uses the authentication bypass. Okay, it's received the settings, saved them to disk. Uh, so at the top here, you can see the master passwords for my ATM, Barnaby's ATM. I actually don't live at 123 Kiwi Street, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so it has the, your location, the master passwords, as well as the phone numbers, and also the IP address. Now, so far, all of these attacks have actually required someone to be at the ATM. And I require a volunteer from the audience now. <laughs> ah, is Brandon actually here? I think he has a specific card created for this. By the way, it was just a bit, any volunteers would have had all their credit card details displayed on the on the screen. So you have to be careful before you raise your hand. <laughs> Yes, that's actually another interesting point. So they, uh, they build the cameras, you can have the cameras built into these machines, but via this remote management you can actually turn off the cameras or retrieve the images or even replace the images. So. <laughs> it's just not Did you get your card back? Okay, so I assume Brandon knows how to use an ATM, so he's just uh, entered his card. Uh, okay, we'll stay on the computer for one sec. So now I should be able to remotely pull the track data. So this should have captured anyone's card that's been entered in there. Okay. Now you can see uh, it captured the Gimme the Loot card, which was uh, my original one to, um, to pop up the menu. Brandon's card, Dr. Raid of the Buster Cardi. I've never seen a credit card that says leet, 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 leet before. But fair play. <laughs> Okay, if we go back to the ATM again, please. Now, of course, uh, you can't, you have to add the remote jackpot. It would just be rude not to, really. So let's try that one. It's connecting, sending the, we have a winner. <laughs> and go down to the dispenser. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Uh, so I'll talk about that briefly at the end if I have time. Uh, but yes. <laughs> okay, so, oh actually I almost forgot about the other ATM, I'm sorry. So you remember that the attack on the other ATM, actually let me just make sure I have the correct firmware on it one sec. Okay, so as you remember, the attack on the other ATM is to simply pop open the compartment with your master key, insert the USB that has the correct firmware. Uh, I'm not very good at this, it takes me a while, but should hopefully be in within three seconds.
So, so that's the attack essentially carried out on that one. And if we could, uh, if we could zoom in on that one. Actually, that that's probably about perfect. There yeah. takes a while to boot ARM um, processors. You know, ARM nine is not the fastest. Now, now you're going to have to forgive me because this was uh, this was tailored f originally for Black Hat, so there might be a bit of um, oh, you'll see. <laughs> it was also tailored for Vegas as well, which you'll also see. Okay, so so that's just the uh, the black hat logo as it floats around the screen, and it's just doing this as the ATM is actually initializing. So right now, this is actually my firmware running on the device. Takes a little while to um, well to boot up. These aren't the fastest machines in the world, unfortunately. Any quick questions while this is happening? Eh? What's up? Uh, I would say a year here on, on and off, you know. It's more of a hobby, sort of a nighttime job. <laughs> and if we go. I think it has a better effect if I just open that first cabinet. <laughs> yeah, it'll keep doing that. Um. I'm just going to disconnect the sound because it's, it's kind of bugging me a bit. Yeah, if we could just go back to the uh, computer again. So countermeasures. <laughs> so the obvious physical countermeasure, of course, is to prevent the walk-up attack, is to offer upgrade options on the physical locks. That's where you have a unique key uh, for each of the locks. Of course, if you want to take this into your own hands, you could just uh, you know, drill a hole and put a padlock on or something. Uh, if a trusted environment is set up, which allows only signed executables to be run, this would have prevented the original attack, and although it wouldn't have prevented the attack vector of the remote, uh, it would have added an ex another barrier for uploading these rogue executables. Now, unfortunately, in Windows CE 5, implementing the trusted environment isn't as straightforward as it should be. Code has to be introduced into the build, and I think the option to implement a secure environment should be made a lot easier. Uh, but what can you do to pre now to prevent the remote attack? Disable RMS. Uh, high chances are you're not using that functionality. Disable it, and that can be done from the operator menu. And finally, it's time to give these devices a proper rehaul. There hasn't been a secure development methodology in from the get-go, uh, so there's, there's not, you need to play catch-up at this stage. Have the code audited, penetration tests, implement these best practices from here on out. You know, there's been a noticeable surge in the community I've seen to research these proprietary devices like ATMs. And the simple fact is these companies who manufacture these devices, you know, they, they're not Microsoft. They haven't had 10 plus years of continued attacks against their software, which is forced secure development. We've gotten where they are today. So I think it's important we dig in, research these devices, find vulnerabilities, find solutions, and ultimately ensure a more secure future. So thank you.